Welcome back to JR Pro Shop Vids, everyone. Today, we're gonna show you how to lay out your own bowling ball. We're gonna do three layout systems for you. We got the dual angle system. We also have the VLS and the 2LS system. So we're gonna run through all three of those. It's gonna be very simple and hopefully help you understand if you don't know already. So before we start getting the layouts, we need your PAP. And if you're not sure how to get your PAP, check your how to find your stats video. We made a couple months back right here in the top left corner. So Jungle here, we're gonna do dual angle first and then Barks is gonna jump in. He's gonna do VLS and 2LS. All right, so let's just jump into it. We're gonna use my PAP. It's four and seven eighths over and three eighths up for those of you at home that wanna follow along. So all you need is a grease pencil and a Prosect. First things first, we have an asymmetrical ball here, a Storm Absolute, as you can see right here. It's got the pin, the CG, and the mass bias down here, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a line from the pin through the mass bias. Step number one. Now, if you're gonna lay out a ball with a symmetric ball, this first line just goes through the pin and the CG, just like that, no mass bias. So that's your first line of attack. So a dual angle has three numbers. First angle is gonna be your core angle, all right? And this is gonna determine how early or late the ball hooks, right? So the lower the number, the earlier the ball's gonna hook, right? And you wanna stay in the happy zone of between 25 and 75 degrees, I would say. Uh, so for me, I like the number 65 as my first number. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna put the zero on the pro sect, right on the pin right here. Right, and we're gonna mark 65 to the right. Once we do that, we're gonna draw a line from the pin through the line we just marked. So now we have an angle of 65 degrees right here. That's our core angle. So 65 is a little bit on the weaker side. It's gonna take the ball a little bit further down lane than opposed to like a 35 degree. And 45 right in the middle, that's gonna be your strongest angle. For me personally, I don't go any lower than 40 on the first angle, just because that ball is gonna get rolling a little too early and a little too strong for me. The closer you are to 45, uh, the earlier and the stronger rolling you're gonna have your ball. So I like to have mine at 65 degrees, and sometimes I even go a little higher, 70, 75, if I wanna push that ball a little further down lane. So the next number is the pin to pap distance. This is a very important number. This is the hook potential of your ball. Three and three eighths, that's the maximum. So if you lay your ball and the middle number is three and three eighths, that's the maximum it can hook. So the further you get away from three and three eighths, either way, it's gonna decrease the hook potential of the ball. So for personally, I like five or five and a quarter. So I'm, I'm killing the ball a little bit. I'm pushing the ball a little further down lane and I'm decreasing the hook potential with my layouts just because I roll it a little bit more up the back and I like to get the ball down the lane a little bit easier and corner a little bit harder. So again, put the zero on the pin and we're gonna mark five right here. For example, a two inch pin, that ball's really not gonna hook very much. It's gonna be very smooth and it's not gonna be able to corner very hard because the core is laid down at two inches. And also the same with like six inches or six and a half inches. Core is gonna be very stable at release point. So it's not gonna be able to hook that much or that hard down lane. So three and three eighths is the maximum. I like five and I would have suggest if you wanted a really strong hooking ball, you go four or four and a half. That's what I would suggest. So the third number is the VAL angle. Now this angle is determined how smooth or how sharp the ball hooks, right? So the lower the number, the smoother the ball is gonna hook. The higher the number, the sharper it's gonna corner down late. I like 25 as the last angle. For me personally, that's really low. It's really sharp. Uh, just because my ball roll is so end over end and heavy that I need the ball to corner. So on a ball like this, an asymmetrical, I'm going 65 by five by 25. So that's really long and really sharp down lane for, for my ball roll, all right? So this mark we just made from our pin to pop, we're gonna set the zero with the pro sect here. And we're gonna measure 25. And then we're gonna meet the dots, draw a line. So you kind of have something that looks like an N when you're looking at it. Now how to find where we put our grip. We're gonna use our PEP and work backwards. So the last number of my PEP is 3 8 up. So we're gonna take this little notch right here and we're gonna go down on the last line we just drew, 3 8 Right here. And then we're gonna draw a 90 degree angle line 
from the last line we drew and the last notch we made. All right, so it's gonna look like this. So this is now our center of grip. And now we need to measure over four and seven eighths, which was the first number of my PAP. Right here, make a notch. And then 90 degrees from the last line we drew. So this little intersection right here, this is the center of grip and the midline. So when you wanna put your fingers and your thumb, you divide your span by two and you pop in your span. So my full span is four and nine sixteenths. So that means halfway is two and nine thirty seconds. So my thumb is going right here. And then the other way, two and nine thirty seconds. There you have it. Fingers are here. Thumb is here. Pin ends up above the ring and the mass bias ends up just above the thumb. This is gonna give me a really long and sharp reaction on this bowling ball. So the reason why we start with a dual angle is because this is the most common layout system. It's used all over the world and you can use it on any bowling ball. For You can use it for two-handers, no thumbers, people with a thumb, everything you can use dual angle. Another little thing I wanna to touch on is a symmetric bowling ball. Sometimes you'll see people in their layouts, they'll just have two numbers. They do something like five by 25 and they're missing the first angle of the dual angle layout system. And that's only for symmetric bowling balls because on a symmetric ball, the core angle, it doesn't matter because there's no mass bias. So when you're laying out a ball, you can make that number anything, the first number, you can make it anything in a dual layout system on a symmetric ball, it's still gonna react the same. With that being said, as long as the pin is in the correct spot on the symmetric bowling ball, where the CG ends up doesn't really matter. So that's why you're gonna see some layouts where the first angle is missing. Don't worry about that, it doesn't really matter anyway. So, but what I do in the shop is I put the first number in there as if it was a asymmetric ball anyway. So if I was laying out a symmetric ball, I'd do the same numbers, 65 by five by 25. The CG would end up right in line, right where it's supposed to be. So that's why you see two numbers sometimes on a symmetric layout. All right, now over to Barks, he's gonna start with a VLS, the vector layout system and he'll probably use a hammer ball, so. All right, everyone, Barks here. We uh, heard from Jung about how dual angle works. Let's talk a little bit about how VLS and 2LS work. Now, VLS you'll see used in a lot of the storm videos. Uh, we're not using angles for that, we're using measurements. So we're talking measurements in inches. So for this, uh, in addition to a Prosect and obviously a grease pencil, you'll also need one of these arc rulers and I'll show you why. First thing we're gonna do, much like in dual angle, we're gonna draw a line from the pin through the mass bias, just like that. So we're gonna lay this ball out as if it's for Jordan once again, just to keep everything consistent here so you don't get too confused. So lay it you might see used in a lot of storm videos is four by four by two. We're gonna break down what all of those numbers mean and what they look like on the bowling ball. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, take our arc ruler, now that first number is four, meaning four inches. And that first number represents the pin to PAP distance. So this arc ruler has a little bit of a spike on the end of it. We're gonna place that right on top of the pin. In this case, we're talking about a hammer ball. It's got dot technology, so it's on top of the dot. <laughs> so right off the bat, we see a difference in how those two layout systems work. In dual angle, the pin to PAP distance was a second number. And here it's the first. You're gonna place the, the pointy little bit here right on top of the dot. We're gonna find four inches on this, and we're gonna make an arc. Now, we're doing, we're doing this for a right-handed bowler, so our arc is going to be on the right side of this line. So we're gonna find four inches here. We're gonna draw an arc, just like that. That represents our pin to PAP distance. So that second number in the VLS layout system represents the mass bias to PAP distance. So again, we're gonna go with four inches. So right on top, of that mass bias marker there. And we're gonna have these two lines intersect each other, just like that. So right here actually represents where the bowler's PAP is. Now for those first two measurements, because the distance between the pin and the mass bias is six and three quarter inches, the minimum sum of those first two numbers has to be at least six and three quarters, or those two lines won't intersect each other. So the third number in the VLS system is the pin buffer. Now a smaller distance will create sharper ball motion and a longer distance will create smoother ball motion. So to do this, we go back to where we started with the pin here. 
And again, on the right side of the ball here, we're gonna create an arc that is two inches out. So right there. We'll grab our Prosect, and we want to create a line that's between our marked positive axis point and the tangent of that arc we just created. So the very outside of it, just like that. So this line here becomes your vertical axis line. And similar to what Jordan did in the dual angle system, we're now gonna measure backward off of his PAP. Because he's 3 eighths up, we're gonna measure 3 eighths of an inch down, which is right there. And create, again, a perpendicular line to this off that line we just drew. Just like that. And this distance is 4 and 7 eighths, so we'll mark that. And again, off the line we just drew, a perpendicular line to create our center line. Just like that. Jordan's uh, full span is 4 and 9 sixteenths of an inch. So once again, line up here and measure half of that. So 2 and 9 30 seconds. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, right there. That's where his thumb's going to go, right there. And then go the other way, once again, 2 and 9, 30 seconds, half of this full span. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. So for him, this is actually a very strong layout. Fingers there. So now we've talked about the VLS system a little bit, let's go more in depth and talk about how some of these measurements interact with each other. So typically, if the pin to positive axis point distance is greater than that second number, the mass bias to positive axis point distance, we expect a ball with this type of layout to rev up a little bit sooner when that mass bias is a little bit closer to the positive axis point. And on the other side of that, if we have a pin distance that's a little bit shorter and a mass bias position that's a little bit further away, we expect that ball to rev up and change direction a little bit harder. For this ball here, we did four by four in those first two numbers. So we find something that's right in the middle of those. So this type of layout system isn't as common. There are some pro shops out there who will use this. Uh, for the most part, you'll probably see this in storm videos more than anything else. You might be wondering if I'm using VLS, and I'm trying to do it on a symmetric ball, how am I gonna do that if I don't have a mass bias to work on? So I'm gonna show you how to do that here. Now, because we don't have a mass bias marker to work off of, we're going to create one. So if we take the prosect here and we look at how it's measured out, uh, from zero to the very end here represents one quarter of the way around the ball. So because the distance between a pin and a mass bias should be six and three quarters, we're going to mark it. We're going to put zero on the pin, and we're going to put a little mark here. And that's going to become the mass bias marker that I'm going to work off of. All right, so now we've talked a little bit about VLS, let's move on to 2LS. Now this is a system that was specifically designed for two-handed and no-thumb bowlers. So much like in VLS, we're going to need that same arc ruler. In this case, we have five different lines that we need to draw in order to create that layout. So let's try a layout that I feel is similar. Let's go 4x4x4, four by four by four. and I'll explain why that last number is going to be a bit different. So we're going to start the same way. We're going to do a line from the pin through the mass bias. Now in this system, the first two measurements, we do them the same way, we mark them the same way. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, four inches. I take our arc ruler, again, to the right of that line that we drew. Do four inches this way, and that mass bias, mark four inches again, where they intersect. Now this is where it differs a fair bit from the VLS system. So that last number is going to represent the distance between the pin and the center of grip. Unlike what we did with the pin buffer, where we drew that arc to the right, we're actually going to draw this arc to the left on the other side of the ball. Draw it right here. So as you can see, those first two are the same, but now we have a line on this side of the ball. So that measurement from pin to center of grip can be anywhere from negative one to seven inches. The longer distance will create more overall hook. If you were to do a negative one, you would go on the other side of where we just drew it. So similar to how we did a pin buffer right up here. We're going to try doing something for Jimu now and using his positive axis point. The next new measurement is going to be what's called the lightning arc. The Jimu will put that on the screen right now. Using the coordinates of your positive axis point, you'll be able to find the lightning arc distance that is appropriate for you. 
So for Jimu, his lightning arc distance is five and a quarter inches. So we're going to place our arc ruler on his positive axis point that we've marked there. And we're going to draw a line that intersects the last one that we drew. So again, five and a quarter right there. So the last arc we're going to draw is his vertical PAP. So much like in VLS and dual angle, where we measured opposite of what the PAP is, because Jimu is one and a half inches down, we're going to measure one and a half inches up and create the vertical PAP line. Right there. The last line we need to draw uh, connects our center of grip with the tangent of that arc right up here. Right there. And then we're going to create a line perpendicular to that to create his center line. To create a line that crosses that point. So because he's a two-hander who doesn't use his thumb, we actually want to drill right on top of that line, not above it. Of course, because he doesn't have a thumb hole, we need to mark where his palm goes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully our video here has helped to explain the differences in all the layout systems and give you a better understanding of how they work. So my question for you today, do you lay out your own bowling balls or do you leave that to somebody else, your pro shop operator? Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for our next video.